Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be testing Threat Locker, which is an interesting zero trust solution. It's kind of like a whitelisting based security solution to protect you from threats like ransomware and malware, not by trying to detect all of them, but by reducing your attack surface. They do it through something they call ring fencing, specific rules in terms of what on the system is able to reach out to the network, what kind of code can be executed, and so on. So this test is going to be really interesting. We're going to try various things because obviously this is not simply going to be a detection test based on hashes or signatures. So to start off though, we're going to start pretty standard. So I'm going to try to execute our typical malic script that's going to run some infamous ransomware. So I'm going to open up terminal and I'll just show you that in our shared folder, we do have quite a few infamous ransomware samples. We're going to try to execute this stuff and we'll see what happens. As usual, we're running our ransomware from our shared network directory. And if we go ahead and begin trying to run ransomware on the system, System. As you can see, everything is getting blocked. And we have alerts here that say to protect you from cybersecurity threats, the applications were blocked from starting. Interestingly, the proactive detection looks like something was allowed to execute or at least briefly. Let's check on the system. Is any ransomware actually running. So if we check in task manager, I don't really see anything taking up CPU usage. That's suspicious. And if we take a look at our files, looks like they're all fine. Nothing has been affected. The reason I'm a little bit surprised by the reporting is because Threat Locker works based on attack surface. So it's either going to block everything or nothing. So it seems like it could just be a reporting error in terms of the script, maybe thinking that something executed because of a delay, but it doesn't look like any of the samples actually executed on the system. Applications running from a network location that aren't necessarily trusted or verified previously are not going to be allowed to run. Of course, that means you all also can't run applications that might be safe coming from a network. So what happens is you get pop-ups like the ones we got. And then if you want to go ahead and allow something from there, so if we go through our blocked file, so, oh, here we can verify that these uh, applications weren't allowed to execute. But if we want, we can go ahead and view them and then we can send a request to be able to run it. What happens next is really interesting because so far what you're seeing is just whitelisting. So if it's untrusted, it doesn't run. But when we do request access, it's going to show up in what they call the response center. And this is actually kind of like a malware analysis environment. So if you open one of these requests, you can see that you can check the virus toll for the file, you can download it, or you can open it in a testing environment, which is kind of like a sandbox. So if you click on that, it's going to run it in their own sandbox. It's kind of like you running it in a VM and you can monitor what's happening. So we can go ahead and run it. We can check virus total. And as you can see, there's so many detections for this because obviously this is a ransomware sample. You can also see what it's doing on the system, the network. You can see what new files it's creating. And soon we can see the ransom note on the desktop. But of course, this is in the test environment. And now that we've determined that this is a ransomware, we can just go ahead and deny the actual execution. So as you can tell by now, this is more designed for enterprises where they want to control what's being run but we're going to test it a lot further. So we're going to try various different techniques and we're going to see if we can somehow get around this ring fencing or the attack surface reduction, because I think it's going to be an interesting experiment. We're also going to talk about what types of attacks might work, but it's also going to be interesting as a concept in terms of how effective is the idea of attack surface reduction and zero trust. Now, from our time testing this, CPU usage can spike up quite a bit at certain times, almost freezing the system. The there's also random Windows Store um, related stuff that can occasionally be blocked. Of course, it probably depends on how long you train it before you deploy it. But in my experience, it wasn't particularly light on the system. All right, well, now for the fun stuff. So we have a PowerShell window open as admin, and we're gonna try to run some commands that an attacker could use. And we'll see how Threat Locker responds if it detects and blocks some of these attempts. So we're gonna start off with with what I think is a very interesting task, which is going to be using the bits transfer to download a malicious PowerShell script. 
Ooh, interesting. So we did get an alert for this. And if we go ahead and check blocked items, this DLL was blocked. I can try running it again just to make sure. Now let's see what happens if we try to delete shadow copies quietly. Success, and there's no notification. So there is a bit of a no compromise assumption. All right, now let's try something else. This is what is commonly known as remote execution. And if it runs successfully, we should be able to open calculator. If we go ahead and run it, it did not work. And if we check the um, blocked items, you can see it's because the IP address or the connection keeps getting blocked. And if we retry this and we reload, you're gonna see another block. So it's quite interesting in the sense that there are quite a few things that it does block um, across the MITRE spectrum, but there are also a lot of things that aren't blocked. Executing CMD directly or SC directly, creating services, it allows that because it's considered normal admin behavior, unless it's being done in a strange manner via something else. But of course, that also means if the machine was already compromised, an attacker could use these commands. Now, another interesting thing I found about ThreatLocker is it has something called the real-time unified audit. Now, this is something that keeps track of everything that's happening on the system. You can see everything that's executing, network activity, and what action is being taken. So for example, we opened Edge, it connected to a bunch of stuff that was permitted. And there are additional controls you can obviously configure yourself. In fact, the way it's supposed to work is when you set up your system, you go ahead and you set it to learning mode. And then you go ahead and install all your applications, do whatever you need to do. So it learns the user activity, and then you switch over to the secured mode, at which point it's going to begin applying restrictions. What I like about the system is it's fairly simple in terms of starting off. Now a quirk I've noticed is sometimes when you're trying to check the files that have been executed, sometimes it just says the file cannot be run in the testing environment. And in that case, you have a couple options. So you can look at the complete file details, but it doesn't really tell you a lot in terms of whether this might be malware or not. And then you do have the option of permit with ring fence, which is an option to allow the file to execute, but then restrict internet access or registry changes or access to protected folders or interactions with high risk applications. So it's kind of like a controlled execution on the system. You can also make sure it doesn't run as admin, but this is all something you would have to decide in that situation to manually restrict it, which if you don't know what the file is and what it's supposed to do is a bit of a challenge. The other option of course is just to permit it, which gives it full access to do everything. Now this is only something that's going to happen for applications that aren't widely known Known. But what I don't like is that there's no automatic ring fencing option, like an option to execute the file with some kind of default restriction that might be more user friendly. This is a problem, of course, a lot of solutions struggle with. We had the same kind of situation with Komodo's sandboxing features, not very user friendly. <laughs> Similarly with ESET's uh, intrusion detection, it just requires so much tinkering, it makes you doubt the actual usability of it. This is a little bit simpler than that, but it's still something where I feel like it's really hard for an admin to necessarily decide. They also have different modules like storage control that allow you to create a policy to apply like controlled folder access type features, limit what you can plug in and read. I wanna test a simple malware PDF. So this is gonna be an exploit where it's gonna run some JavaScript code in the background when we open it. And we have an old vulnerable version of Adobe Reader to make this super interesting. Before that though, I wanna load TCP view so we can see if any malicious connections are made. But of course, we have to allow this before it can execute because it's not something I guess most people would have in their environment. It's not like an image viewer or a PDF application or Microsoft Word. So we have to go in and it shows up here as a known application and we can go ahead and decide we can allow it to elevate and permit. And I'm going to approve this. Actually, we have to classify it before and it says there's a built-in category for Windows Sys internal suite. Now, when we run it, it actually works. So we can monitor if any remote connections show up as we open this PDF. We're going to open it in Acrobat and we'll allow the execution of any malicious content. So go ahead, accept that, and 
I'm gonna skip the setup and it says there's a problem reading this document. I'm gonna continue. And after a while, we don't see any new connections that are interesting really. Now, for those who are curious, if you restore Snapshot and just open Adobe, you can see it's making basically the same connection. So we didn't have any malicious C2 activity there. The ring fencing allows you to use applications like PDF viewers, but only for the purpose they were designed. So you can open PDFs, but if it does something that's not supposed to do, like try to launch a PowerShell, that is not going to be permitted. It is worth noting though, that this kind of product and strategy is not going to do anything for phishing attacks. Like if the PDF has a link, takes you to a website, you enter in your credentials. So there are limitations versus a detection-based approach. A lot of the effectiveness is going to depend on how it's deployed and making sure that the initial access by any attacker is prevented. Do you think this kind of a system is better than an antivirus or worse? Do you like the concept of zero trust or do you think detection is ultimately the best approach? Is something professionals debate about all the time? And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed this kind of analysis and if you'd like me to look at more products in this space i'm also planning on using a lot of the commands and malicious pdfs in some of the other tests that i do against the defender kaspersky and all the rest and of course the second part of our ransomware test is coming right up so don't forget to subscribe thank you all so much for watching this is leo and as always stay informed stay secure